Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. Hi guys, a few weeks ago I uploaded a video where I did gum dichromate printing and this was the result. If you have not watched this video yet, please click on the link on the top right hand corner. However, for this print, this is a single color, single layer print. So so today I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try a tricolor multiple layers gum dichromate print. So the concept is that if you use three different kinds of ink, the yellow, the magenta, and the cyan, you can actually combine them into different layers to get a full color print. So today, instead of using digital negative, I'm, I'm going to do it the O and hard way, I'm going to take three shots of 4x5 black and white uh, film using three different color filters the red filters, the, the green filter and the blue filter and then first of all I'm going to uh, combine these three negatives in Photoshop and to see whether we can get a full color photo and then after that I will try to do my gum dichromate prints uh, in three layers using three different pigments. Do watch to the end of this video to see whether am I successful in doing this tri-color print and how is the results. Okay, today our scene is um, a still life, so I just pick these few fruits for their color. We have an apple, orange, a lime for the green, and then uh, some grapes. Okay, uh, so for the filters, we need uh, three color filters the red filter, the green filter, and the blue filters. So for the red and green, I have the cocaine. Uh, filters but for blue I don't have the cooking filter so I'm I have cut a piece of the blue jar hopefully this will work also For the camera, I'll be using my Shamonix 4x5 camera with the Fujinon 210 lens. That's the usual lens that I use. I'll be using my Shanghai black and white film ISO 100. So I've loaded uh, three sheets of film into this holder. So to meter, I am going to use my light meter and do a incident reading. But for every filter that I use, I'm going to put it over the dome and take a reading. So like in this case, the red filter is giving a reading of one over six at f five point six. I did the measurement earlier. So later for the green filter and blue filter, I will do the same thing. But there is usually some compensation that need to be done when you use a filter. For red filter, it's usually about a two-stop compensation.
I've went ahead to scan the three negatives and I bring them into Photoshop. I did some simple cropping and some leverings to adjust the, the tone. Eh? So this is what we have. So this is actually the one that was taken with a red filter. So I just press Ctrl I on Photoshop, it will turn into a positive image. And this is the one taken with a green filter. And let me invert it also. And the last one was taken with a blue filter. Let me invert it. Right. So if we um so this is taken with the red filter, the green filter, and the blue filter, right? So you can see that the in let's take a look at the apple. Right? Apple is slightly red color, so you can see in the three photos, the one taken with the red filter has a lighter stone, right? Because a uh, red filter will always lighten its own color. Uh, same thing for the grids, it's also reddish in color, right? And if we take a look at the lime, this is uh, the green, right? Although not very obvious, but um, this the lime in the first photo taken with a red filter is much darker than the second one and the third one, right? Right. So the orange with the red fil uh, with the blue filter that means the the rightmost picture that is the has the darker stone, right? And with the green filter is darker than the one taken with the blue filter, but the lightest is the one taken with the red filter, right? So how do we combine all these three into a color photos? That's using the uh, additive um, color printing theory. Eh? That means um, if we add this tree, if we combine these three together, it should form a color image. So what we can do is to see that in Photoshop, I open up the three photos, and then I have a brand, uh, and I have a blank image. I open up the channels window, so you can see that we have the individual channels, red, green, and blue. So what I can do is go to the photo taken with the red filter, which is this one. I'll do a copy and then I go to the new image and then paste it into the red channel. Right? So what you see is a cyan image. Huh? Okay, so then we'll go to the green channel and copy the photo taken with the green filter and paste it into the green channel. So now you start to see some colors here and there. Huh? And then finally, we copy the image taken with the blue filter into the blue channel. First thing we need to do on the paper is to mark out the four corners. This is where we will coat the chemicals on. Right, so just four light marks at the four corners. Um, okay, the other thing I've done is also to align the three negative, the one that we took with the three different filters. I've aligned them and uh, used this push pin to mark the holes. Right, this is important so that when we um, print the multiple layer on the paper, we can align the negative. So similarly, I will use the same pin to poke two holes onto the paper. Right. So what we are seeing here is the negative taken with the blue filter. I just call it the blue negative. Huh? So, and the color that we have to coat on the paper will be yellow right so i'm going to mix the chemical we have the ammonium dichromate okay and then we have the gum arabic and of course the yellow pigment some cheap poster color i will use uh, in, uh the ratio of one is to one uh, that means about maybe about 
uh, 5ml of uh, dichromate right and then uh, 5ml gum arabic and a little bit of paint okay so let's do it it's probably a bit too much for that four five paper but i just want to make the measurement a bit easier right so i think this is about four okay same dichromate also mixing up to 8 ml So just mix the chemical around. Okay. And we can pour it into a small tray. Okay. It's quite a bit of chemical. And then we can add in the yellow pigment disposable spoon to take out a bit of the pigment right. again this is very much estimation people say it's like a fee okay and then I'm going to put it in and mix it well Today is actually the second day after I've coated the emulsion uh, because I coated it quite late in the day and uh, it didn't dry in time for me to uh, expose it to light so I continue today so this is my negative taken with the blue filter uh, I'm not sure you can see but what I've done is that I do a small marking here one dot to to denote that is the taken by the blue negative two dots for green and three dots for red so that's how i identify it very quickly without the need to analyze how the tone look so yesterday we also marked the two pinhole for variation so i'm going to just align the holes again So you can see I'm still doing it in a low tungsten light environment. Uh. This was the emulsion. The dichromate is not sensitive to tungsten light. Okay. So this is how I should do it. And then what I'll do is that I will tape one end down with some uh, sticky tape. But try to make it not too sticky. If it's too sticky, it will stick to the fiber of the paper also. Right. Okay. And then I can remove the two pin. Okay. So later when we check exposure, we will we will leave out and then put it back with uh, complete alignment. Okay. So blue filter, yellow pigment, and we are ready for our first layer of exposure. Um, I'm going to use my UV box and try exposure for uh, maybe 5 minutes and take a look. So we come back in a while. So as usual, I'm just using two pieces of glass as my contact printing frame. Uh, and then just keep it with four butterfly clips. That should keep the negative and the paper flat against each other. 
So I'm ready to do the printing. So this is my homemade UV exposure box. So I'm going to put the uh, print under this light for about five minutes, and later we'll look at uh, look at the video. Okay, five minutes is up. So I have removed the top piece of glass, and then we can take a look. Right, I think you can see a fake image there. That will be our yellow layer. Actually, I'm not so sure is this a good exposure timing, but um. The idea behind dichromic printing is that if you expose it for too long, all the gum will get hardened and you will not be able to wash any of it off. So I'm just going to go ahead with this uh, 5 minute first and develop in water. Okay, I put the print in the water for about 20 minutes and um, Every 5 or 10 minutes, I change the water so that you can see that the, the water is a bit yellowish. That is a combination of both the dichromate and also the yellow poster color. So I'm going to change it again. And um, when the color is no longer yellowish, now I think uh, the washing is more or less done. You can see that there's already a yellow image there. But I will just wash it and hopefully the water it will become will stay clear and then we can probably start to dry it. Eternity later. Okay, so I think we are about there. You can see a very light image with the, the yellow pigment. So I'm going to remove this and hang it up to dry and then we once it's dry we will prepare for our second coating um, with the magenta color. Okay so the um, first coating has dried. So this is my first print. Uh, this is the one that I exposed at 5 minutes before I brought it to develop. But I find it to be a bit light in the tone. So I'm not so sure whether will this work out. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this is the first time I do a tricolor print. So what I did was to make another print. I coated another print. And uh, this time I exposed it for 10 minutes under the UV light. And this is the difference. This is a thicker coating and this is a lighter coating. I'm not sure which one will work out to be better. So my what I intend to do is to um, for my second and third layer, I'm going to do the same thing. For every uh, layer, I will expose on this piece of paper 5 minutes for which layer and for this one, it will be exposed for 10 minutes. And hopefully at the end we can come to a conclusion uh, which one is better or uh, is are both going to turn out to be good with different uh, tone or are they going to be turn out to be bad both could be too thin or too thick so do watch on to the video to see the final result like last night I'm going to use about 4 ml of uh, dichromate 4 ml of gum arabic giving it a 1 is to 1 ratio and then some bit of a magenta color from the poster color and then we uh, coat the second layer
Okay, the prints after the second coating has dried. So let's take a look. You can see that I have uh, two uh, prints here. One that is exposed for 5 minutes and one that is exposed for 10 minutes. So let's examine this one that is uh, exposed for 5 minutes. It's now uh, mainly the magenta color. Uh. Um, I believe because the first layer of yellow is very light so we don't see much trace of it. Right, and then we take a look at the second print, the one that's exposed with um, the the one that's exposed for ten minutes. Uh, you will see some orange color, right? Somewhere here is orange. That is a combination of the magenta and the yellow color to give us the orange color here, and there are some traces here. Right, the not much detail in the lime and the grips area, but um, we we'll continue to coat the third layer and then expose uh, both prints again, and then we will be able to see the final result after the third layer is coated and exposed and dry. Okay, now we will proceed with the coating of the third emulsion. That means the red negative. Um, together with the cyan color. I couldn't find a cyan color when I bought my poster color so I got something called the sky blue. Uh, we have to see how this turned out. Okay, now we are at the third layer. In fact, this is the third day. Um, we have two prints here. First of all, this one is the one with the shorter exposure time of five minutes, and this is the one at to be exposed for ten minutes. Right, so we have the cyan um, coating on top. So now we are going to put on the last negative the red negative and then we will do our exposure this is the one that's exposed for 10 minutes for each of the layer so comparing these two prints i would think that the one that we printed for 10 minutes uh, looks much better at least i can see the orange here um, I also can see the red in the apple and also the grips. Somehow the lime is not, uh, the green in the lime is not showing. Um, next we take a look at the one that we exposed for 5 minutes. Um, it's mainly the magenta color, right, with some blues. The yellow uh, layer seems to be too light, so we don't get a full color um, uh, print at all. But it's good that I try both timing so that I will know uh, which one will work better. Thank you for watching to this part of the video so you have seen the final result. I will call it a partial success and I will certainly uh, continue to explore this uh, gum dichromate printing technique. I learned all this through uh, watching by reading online articles, watching online video. I also refer a lot to this book, The Alternative photographic processes. This is a very thick book. There are many printing techniques inside and, and there are two chapters on gum dichromate printing and there are many variations to this uh, printing process. I will certainly try to do more and uh, in fact uh, three layers may not be enough. Inside this book they actually have a, a instruction on how to do like six seven layers of uh, print um, but I will explore that in the future. So if you are an experienced gum dichromate uh, printer and you have some advice for me, please leave it in the comment section below and I'll be happy to learn from you. Otherwise, if you have any other thoughts, please also leave it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Thank you so much. Bye! Hi guys, we have come to the end of this video. Please like it, share it and finally do subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. Take care!
बाय